Hi guys, I'm Amy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a reading wrap up for all of you. It's been a while since I've done like a general uh, reading wrap up because the last reading wrap up that I did was for round one of the booktube uh, prize judging. I'll link that up here for you guys if you haven't seen it. Um, so these books have been, that I've read that I'm going to talk about, have been spread out since... January-ish time frame, I think, because one of them carried over, which was a buddy read that we, we took our time with, and that was okay. Um, but I have some middle grade March wrap-ups for this, and technically a couple of these books I read for Doris's I Heart-a-thon read-a-thon that she hosted in February. So, like I said, it's been a little while, but if you guys are interested in some of the books that I've just picked up because I wanted to uh, as of lately, then go ahead and keep on watching. We'll start with my middle grade March books that I selected. The first of which that I read was Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This is a, I believe, mostly true story. It might even be nonfiction, but it's written in verse and it's about Jacqueline Woodson's experience growing up. Her verse was absolutely beautiful. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was incredibly ac accessible for young readers, but also I appreciated it a lot as an adult, which I think says something that someone can write something that so many readers can enjoy of all ages. I just really, really enjoyed the reading experience of this. Of course, it went quick because it was middle grade and written in verse, but if you haven't read it, you definitely should. There's a reason it won as many as awards as it did because it's it's that good. It's that good. So I'd say go check it out. The second book that I read for middle grade March was A Mall Unbound by Aisha Saeed. First of all, this cover, tell me this cover isn't amazing. I really like this cover. But in this story, we are uh, following a young Pakistani girl named Amal. She has a bunch of younger sisters. She's the oldest in her family. And through a series of somewhat unfortunate events, she is placed in a position in which she insults one of the most wealthy, powerful families in her town slash village. And in order to pay her debts, she is forced to go work as a servant in that household and becomes a maid to that man's mother. And it's about her experience believing initially that she will very, very quickly be back in her family's home. Uh, and when that doesn't happen, how she deals with that and the things that go along with her living in this household that's very different from her own. I have to say that I enjoyed the reading experience while I was reading it, but looking back, I don't find it very memorable, which is unfortunate, but it definitely provided a different perspective to my own. And I think that's really awesome for young readers as well. And it makes it accessible and opens them to the different ways that the world works. So in that sense, I think it's a win. But as far as the story goes, goes. I don't think it's the best written middle, middle grade novel, but worth a read if it seems interesting to you. And the last three books that I read for middle grade March, two of which were rereads, one of which was um, the first time that I read it, and they're from the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. So I reread the first two, The Lightning Thief and The Sea of Monsters, and for the first time I read The Titan's Curse, which was a book that Aaron selected for me to read in our video in which we picked TBRs for one another. And these books are fun, I have to say that. I think most of us know what these are about. Oh, and they're by Rick Riordan, I didn't mention that. Um, and in this story, we are following Percy Jackson, who is considered a half-blood, which means one of his parents is one of the Olympian gods, and he ends up at Camp Half-Blood, which is a place for half-bloods to go and be safe and just learn about themselves and their families, etc., etc. And we quickly find out that Percy is the only son of Poseidon, one of the three most powerful gods. And this, these are his uh, adventures and experiences with his friends. I have to say that I think they get a bit predictable. Like there's definitely a formula that Riordan follows. Not that a lot of books don't do that, but um, that was a bit disappointing to me because they become a bit predictable in as far as like the flow of the story goes. But I do have to say that I love the portrayals of the Greek gods. Like the fact that Hermes is constantly wearing like 
a biker's outfit because he's running messages everywhere. Poseidon is in a Hawaiian t-shirt and flip-flops and kind of unkept, whereas Zeus is in a pinstripe suit and has like a nice trimmed salt and pepper beard and all of that. So I enjoyed that part of it. I kind of just wish they were more meant for adults, if I'm going to be honest with you. So if you know of like an adult series that's similar to this, please let me know because I think I'd really enjoy it. Because I do enjoy myth retellings, but these are just becoming a bit meh for me. I think I still plan to finish the series, but they've gotten a bit more disappointing as I've gone on. And I happened to read another middle grade book specifically for Doris's I Heartathon uh, readathon, and I chose Nightbird by Alice Hoffman. This is a book that I mentioned in the video where I talked about authors that I own multiple of their works but hadn't read yet. So now I've officially read Alice Hoffman, although it is a middle grade book. But in this story, we are following a young girl named Twig who's kind of ostracized from her community um, due to an active choice from her mother because they know some things that they aren't willing to share. And when a new family moves in very, very close to their property and there's girls about Twig's age, they kind of struck up, strike up a friendship and this is about what happens after that. I really enjoyed this. I thought this was a very sweet story about learning who you are and what you think is right and accepting other people for who they are. There's a little bit of a mystery component to this, which I also really appreciated. So if you're looking for a fun middle grade book, I think you should pick it up. It's a very, very quick one because it is short and it's also just beautifully, beautifully published. Like these are the end papers. This being Twig's house and this being the new family's house. Um, I, I was very, very happy to have read it and look forward to reading some of Hoffman's work for adults. And the second book that I read for Doris's readathon was The Secret Diary of Hendrik Rowan, 83 and a quarter years old. I, I loved, loved, loved this book so very much. So this is the diary of Hendrik Rowan, and he is living in Denmark at an a retirement home I would say so he doesn't cook his own meals they don't even have like a full kitchen per se in their individual apartments uh, but there also is the other half of the um, facility that they stay in that's more um, directly like assisted living for people who cannot live on their own because they have dementia or other um, ailments that they are fighting against but this is about this is just Hendrick's thoughts and how he views other old people and he refers to everyone that lives in this place with him as inmates because they're all stuck and he talks about the how sick he is of old people complaining of this or that and the horrible things that happen to them when their schedule changes but then compares that to the horrific things happening all over the world and this is a book that made me cry so hard but also a book that had me crying because I was laughing so hard and that was within a couple pages of each other at times. This is a book that presents to you the tough realities of getting old and how we handle the world around us but also the funny things about life and kind of the cornerstone of this story is Hendrik and some of his friends start an old but not de dead club in which they plan events for one another for outings and I highly highly recommend it come to find out last month a second book came out and needless to say I'll be getting my hands on it and reading it I highly 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 recommend and for the buddy read that I mentioned, this was a buddy read with Jessica at Jessica Reads Things. I'll link her channel down below for all of you. And we read Middlemarch by George Eliot. This is a brick of a book, uh, clocking in at over 800 pages, in which we are following the provincial town of Middlemarch and all that happens within it. And there are our main characters, uh, mostly women, but a few men uh, thrown in. And it's about them trying to determine how they will live their lives and how society says they should and how they choose to and of course there's a major theme of marriage and how you marry and who you marry and then once you're married to said people whether or not marriage is what you thought it would be and for those reasons I absolutely loved this book. George Eliot is really a wonderful writer 
Um, it can be a bit dense as far as classics go, so I don't think this is a classic you should start with by any means, but if you're a bit, or a bit more versed in the realm of classics, I would say definitely give it a shot. But I will warn you, there is a lot of discussion on uh, medical reform at the time and political reform, and I have to say, I really didn't enjoy those bits slash parts because they really they don't translate well to our current times and so it, those got a bit slow and were a bit of a slog to get through but all the dialogue and the character development is well worth getting through through those bits like i said it's a big book but i really 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 enjoyed it and for another author in which I mentioned in the authors I own multiple books of but haven't read yet, um, I read State of Wonder by Ann Patchett. Um, this is the story of Dr. Marina Singh. She works for a pharmaceutical company um, uh, developing uh, prescriptions and medications, and she is selected by her boss, uh, Dr. Fox, who is also the man she's in a relationship with, although no one knows about it, to go to the Amazon to find out what happened to her coworker who passed away while he was down there, and to find out the what happened with him, but also what is the progress on a drug being developed by a woman in the Amazon that is really reluctant to share her process with the company uh, financing her research. And this is Marina's adventure into the Amazon. And this story is just, it's one of those that it's very, very slow moving and languid. And I loved that about this because her writing reflects that in the sense that she's in no rush to get you where she wants you to go, which makes you just feel like you're just delicious wrapped up in this writing that is very very descriptive and lyrical and you just get a sense for the jungle and this Amazon this place that really no one wants to be but they find themselves in and this ending was completely unexpected I was completely caught off guard she had me convinced of one thing and the opposite happened and that doesn't happen very often with me so I'm really really excited to get to more uh, patch it I really really enjoyed this book and again I definitely definitely recommend and the last book I have to share with you guys is the year of wonders a novel of the plague by Geraldine Brooks another author that I mentioned in the authors I own but haven't read video and the irony of the fact that I went out and bought this book despite owning two others of hers because this was a buddy read with Doris at Aldi Books, Jacqueline at Six Minutes for Me, Britta at Britta Bowler, and Natalie at uh, or Natalie, excuse me, Natalie at my reading days for Ozzy April. And in this book, our main character is Anna. She is 18 when this story opens, and she's the mother of two and this is and widowed and this is the story of what happens to her small mountainous village when a uh, shipment of cloth comes in that is infected with the plague and this village decides to quarantine themselves from everyone else so no one comes into their town and no one leaves and this is another book that i really really enjoyed parts of it and the end especially, I really didn't enjoy. So what I didn't enjoy about this book is I didn't find Anna herself as a believable character, unfortunately. Um, her openness to the world and new experiences and other people just didn't seem realistic to me. And I might be a bit harsh on that. I'm not exactly sure why I had such a strong reaction to her as a character because I liked her character and I enjoyed her experience, reading about her experiences, but I just didn't think it was believable or realistic. Although I have to say Brooks's writing is so, so good. There's a lot of discussion in this book about bodies, dead bodies, the grotesque, the living, how, nature, the descriptions in this book just completely transport you there. The writing once again has this flow that it doesn't sound or feel like Brooks is trying too hard to make this sound really pretty but it just is it's effortless her writing was effortless so I didn't love the story itself so much but I'm so excited to read more of Brooks's writing so for that reason I think I gave it like a three on Goodreads because I love the writing so much but I found the story slash the character development lacking so that was an interesting experience but a wonderful buddy read with a great group of ladies um 
and another and a read for Aussie April. Alrighty guys, that is a lengthy, lengthy reading wrap up, but normally I don't wrap up so many books at a time. I try to do about five, but it's been a while and I just figured I'd throw them all in. So if you guys have read any of these books, again, let me know your thoughts, whether or not you enjoyed them, or if you're interested in reading any of them now. Uh, but if you guys like this video, please like it. And if you loved it, please subscribe and we will see you in my next video. Happy reading. Oh, <laughs> let me just fall out of my chair on camera. That would be, that'd be great. Uh, I didn't, I, that was a terrible, terrible, terrible introduction. Ooh, I woke her up. Oh, she's warm. She's toasty warm from being all bundled up into bed, in her bed. <laughs>